Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations with complex numbers. So we have ZW equals 7 minus I and Z plus W equals 5 and we're going to be solving for Z and W. So let's see how we can solve this problem in more than one way. First method I'm going to use substitution for the first method. Let's go ahead and isolate W because I like the Z better. Write it as 5 minus Z and then plug it into this. ZW equals 7 minus I. Now we're going to go ahead and replace W with 5 minus Z. So this is going to become Z times 5 minus Z equals 7 minus I. And that'll turn into a quadratic equation. How nice, right? Distribute 5z minus z squared equals 7 minus i, and then z squared minus 5z plus 7 minus i equals 0. Now, if you were able to find two numbers, never mind, we'll talk about that later. Uh, let's get to work. Uh, I was just thinking about something, I got distracted. Now, we can use the quadratic formula, can't we? Let's use it, why not? So it's going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. a is 1, and divide the whole thing by 2a, which is 2. Now let's go ahead and simplify the expression inside the radical. 25 minus 28 plus 4i, that'll be negative 3 plus 4i. So here's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to square root this. The question is, the million dollar question is, how do you square root a complex number? And the answer is actually pretty easy. There's a formula, but if you don't want to use the formula, you can go ahead and set this equal to a plus bi because it's the name of this channel, right? And then square both sides and that'll give you the value of a and b, hopefully. So let's go ahead and do it and put this guy on the left, a squared minus b squared, remember i squared is negative 1, plus 2abi equals negative 3 plus 4i. Now we have the real part being equal to the real part and we have the imaginary part being equal to the imaginary part. That gives us the following, a squared minus b squared equals negative 3 and 2ab equals 4 which means ab equals 2. Now you can go ahead and use substitution uh, in this case, you can't use elimination right? But you could use substitution to solve the system, this is just another system, but there's an easier way to do it. We're looking for good solutions, solutions that are integers, so try to find two numbers whose product is 2. And of course the difference of their squares is supposed to be negative 3. Since A needs to be less than B, because their difference is negative, I'm going to pick A equals 1 and B equals 2. Of course, this is just going to give us one of the solutions, but that's good enough. So, in other words, the square root of negative 3 plus 4i is going to be A plus BI, which is 1 plus 2i. Nice, right? Now, let's go ahead and plug this in. What did our expression say? Z equals something, something. And from here, we get negative 3 plus 4i, and we found that the square root of that number to be 1 plus 2i. Let's go ahead and erase this area and replace the radical with 1 plus 2i. So, here's what we get. 5 plus minus 1 plus 2i, I must use parentheses, divided by 2, and if you split it up, you're going to get 5 plus 1 plus 2i divided by 2, which is 3 plus i, and if you subtract it, 5 minus 1 minus 2i divided by 2, that'll be 2 minus i. So you've got two solutions. You can call this z1 if you want and z2. So those are going to be the z values we have been looking for. Make sense? I mean easy, right? I, uh, there's also a formula like I said earlier, but uh, this works well with all cases, which is nice. So it's safer. Now we got the values of z with the first method, right? And if you want, you can go ahead and check them out. That's actually how I came up with the problem. I just first came up with z and w and then just plug them in. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the second method, shall we? Maybe we can also mention a third method if possible. So one more time, let's write the system. ZW equals 7 minus I. Z plus W equals 5. Awesome. Now, what could be a different way to approach this problem? The first method used what? What did, you, what did you use? Substitution. Okay, so we got to do something different. How about this? Since the sum of z and w is 5, 
then can I assume that, okay, Z plus W is real, by the way, but ZW isn't. So that means Z and W are not complex conjugates. What are complex conjugates? If you're new to those concepts, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a series of videos on basics of complex numbers. Or if you need a refresher, go ahead and watch them, right? Why not? And if you have any questions, always feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. Great, so for the second method, let's go ahead and use something cool. Since the sum of Z and W is a real number, I'm just going to assume that Z can be written as A plus BI and W can be written as C minus BI. In other words, the imaginary parts need to cancel out. Okay, so what? You got to plug it in here as well. Let's do it. So we have A plus BI multiplied by C minus BI equals 7 minus I. Let's distribute them, see what happens. We get AC and then from here we get minus b squared i squared, which is plus b squared. And then we get the minus abi and plus cbi. We can kind of write it as bc minus ab all together multiplied by i, which is equal to 7 minus i. Again, these two complex numbers are equal. This is supposed to be 7. This is supposed to be negative 1, right? The equality of two complex numbers. So that gives us a system. Nice. And then we can kind of factor out the b here and write it as c minus a, I think that should be an A, and now we get equals negative 1. Awesome, do you like this? But we have another equation, and that comes from here. Let's find out. If you add them up, you're going to get A plus C, which is 5. Good. Let's write that down here too, because you know what? We have a system of equations, and there's only three variables, so it's kind of nice that we can solve it. So from here, you can isolate C minus A and write it as negative 1 over B, and then we know that C plus A, which is the same as A plus C, by the way, is equal to 1. By adding these and subtracting these equations, we can get C and A in terms of B, and then plug those in here. That should probably give us a quadratic or cubic or some rational function or something like that. I don't know. Then we can hopefully solve for A, B, C, and then we can just plug it in. Remember, our goal was to solve for Z and W. Once we find A, B, C, we got z and w right okay awesome now obviously this is not the only way to do it and there's probably a third way to do it which is something that i can't really think about actually i can think about it that is vietas formulas yes yes i remembered now so vietas formulas basically tells us that okay if you know the sum of the roots and the product you can kind of write your equation like this let's just use u u squared minus the sum which is 5u plus the product 7 minus i equals 0, guess what? This is going to give you a quadratic equation. If you solve it using the quadratic formula, guess what you're going to get? The exact same solutions because it's the exact same equation. Make sense? Just a slightly different approach. Would you agree? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.